Welcome back to today's communion service. I'm glad you were able to join me for the sermon, and I hope you enjoyed it. And so let's celebrate uh, the great Thanksgiving, Holy Eucharist, communion with one another and in communion with other Christians around the world. Hear the good news. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. The night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on you at your place of worship in your home. Make these gifts, bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We, who are one body, the North Cross body of Christ, 
in communion with the larger body of Christ in Christendom across the world. And this is one loaf. When we break this bread, is it not a means of sharing in the broken body of Christ for our salvation? Christ freely breaks himself apart for the creation that he created, you and I. We partake in Christ. We enter into the sheep pen through the sheep gate. And our lives are changed and transformed forever. We, in return for that abundant life given back to us, we now go out and break ourselves apart for as many people as we possibly can, telling them the good news of Jesus Christ until we take our last breath. When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a means of sharing in the shed blood of Christ that was poured out for us? So Christ's body is broken and he is poured out. He is broken and his unconditional love is poured out over all humanity. His unconditional love pours inside of you and that unconditional love ought to pour out of you. And there should be no impedance to that flow. This is the Lord's table. This is not the Methodist table. All are welcome to receive communion this morning. It doesn't matter whether you're a member of the church that I serve, North Cross, or any church. All are welcome to receive communion, this table of grace that was set by Jesus himself. We serve by intention. You will do this um, at your homes. We'll take a piece of bread and then uh, say this is the body of Christ broken for you. And then you will take the cup and say this is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. You'll dip the bread into the grape juice and then you partake both elements at the same time. Uh, some people have asked me why don't we serve wine? We serve the unfermented fruit of the vine out of sensitivity for those who may have special needs in our congregation and certainly out of sensitivity for our children. Um, and so that's why we do that. Okay, let's now participate in this ancient ritual taught to us by Jesus, commanded for us to do. This is the body of Christ that was broken for you. This is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Now, go forth in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen.